Great. Hey, everyone, we'll be starting it now. I'll make Nitesh as the host so that I can focus on uh, these particular presentations. So I'm just making him as a host. Okay, so uh, let's begin now. I think uh, we have uh, enough uh, participants so that we can start with. Few people will join later and we can uh, see how we can cover that up, whatever they have missed. I believe uh, most of you uh, may know me. If uh, you don't know me or if you didn't have an interaction with me, my name is Niladri Mahapatra. I have kind of uh, 21 years of industry experience. Out of that, 10 to 12 years, I am in the agile world. I am an SPC. I conduct scaled agile training as well as I do uh, organizational implementations or transformations for various organizations. That's a very high level about me. Let's not uh, spend much details on myself in case anyone have some questions. We can have that about me or what we do or how we can help you out on our learning goal. Let's uh, begin with the screen. Everyone able to see my uh, screen right now, I believe. Can anyone please answer yes or no? Yes, we can see. No. Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. So if anyone able to see, that means uh, everyone able to see it. If you are not able to see that screen, that means there is some settings you need to set at your local machine. Okay, great. I'll be beginning now. So, so we understand that uh, everyone you are already aligned with or attached with some of the agile practices. Nowadays, the engineering practice is working on such a way that uh, directly or indirectly you are working on uh, some of the agile part, maybe as a scrum master, maybe as a product owner, maybe as a developer. Now, what we are trying to do is we'll talk about a very fundamental of scaled agile. I believe few of you or most of you already heard about scaled agile that's actually booming in the industry all the organizations they are transitioning to scaled agile and our goal is to try to find out a fundamental of what exactly the scaled agile is and uh, most recently scaled agile has came up with a new version that's 5.0 what exactly it is and we'll talk about few of the certifications that scaled agile provide what are those and which one will be best fit for you? So let's try to begin with the first steps. We'll be trying to blend your existing practices within a team and how we can transit to a scale agile. So if I talk about a team level, everyone you are already working on or you might have worked on two nature of work or two frameworks of agile scrum or kanban so normally scrum when we talk about scrum it takes 7 to 11 members that's uh, what advisable but you might have experienced a different uh, team composition and kanban also have the same now when we talk about these two framework we know there are a product product owner that's uh, work with a scrum team a scrum master is there and a development team combinedly these three members or three roles make a scrum team and similarly when we talk about a kanban team a development team is definitely there a product owner or scrum master is optional now these are the two different natures of team we have now if we talk about uh, if we have multiple teams like this i have one scrum team i have another scrum team so in a large organizations you may feel uh, to complete one portfolio ideas or to complete one product we may need a multiple uh, products or multiple teams and guys if you are traveling somewhere please go on mute now let's uh, try to find out if I have uh, something like this, if I have multiple teams working for one value stream or working for one uh, big goal of an organization's one product, how we'll be managing them. So scale agile provide a framework that actually binding all the teams, map them with guys, whoever is not in mute, please go on mute. Okay, can uh, I'm not sure who is speaking. Um, Nitesh, uh, will you be able to make the mute, please? Yeah, sure, Nilanti. I'm, I'm keeping that on a uh, regular basis. 
Okay. So uh, if we have multiple teams now, uh, so far we are working on individual teams. We were delivering uh, our uh, values as a team contributions. Now we need to merge multiple teams. So scale agile framework, how that actually help organizations or enterprise to combine multiple teams work in one flow that will be learning. So let's try to understand what's the problem we are facing if we are not working on any of the scale agile framework. There are multiple scale agile framework. So scale agile framework is uh, one brand that's uh, scaled uh, scale agile framework INC, but scaling agile, it's not only scaled agile, there are multiple uh, ways like Nexus is there. Many people use Spotify to scale up there. So Nexus is uh, there, Scrum of Scrum of, is there, Less is there, Dad is there, but we're talking about SAFE, S A F E. The challenge is what we have. Let's say too many team members to collaborate, manage, work together. That's one of uh, the problems. So too many team they are working and how they will collaborating and how they will be managing that work that becomes a problem. They don't have a common goal. Everyone is actually running towards a individual goal and that's actually giving a different directions of flow and it's very difficult to marry their goals at one given point of time. Lack of coordinations. Yes, we understand development not in synchronizations. Yes. Unmapped dependencies, dependencies creating problems. So if they have different uh, one team member team has some dependencies with another team, resolving, mapping, synchronizing or resolving those dependencies becomes a problem. Now teams are not working in cadence. Some team working on two week sprint, some teams working on three week sprint, some team starts their sprint on Monday, some team working starting there on Wednesday. There are lots of problems. They are not working on cadence. So synchronization is not very good. And they are getting actually multiple source of requirement. Their product owner is synced with different stakeholders. The stakeholders are not synced with each other. The stakeholders may be working for one product, but they are, their prioritization is not in proper sync. So different source of each requirements are coming to different teams. To take care of all that, Scale Agile Framework says, okay, if you have multiple teams, let's bind all the teams in one boundary and let's call them as a program. So that's what Scale Agile do. They bring up all the team members. We'll actually learn in much details in a moment. So let's try to understand the team formations and that will help us understand how exactly it's, uh, we are growing towards Scale Agile. Now, this is called program. If I have multiple teams, we'll be aligning all the teams in one boundary or one area that we'll call as program. So my program name can be program one, or you can give us some meaningful name that that's actually talk about your program. Now, as a team, I had three roles, Scrum Master, Product Owner, and Development Team. When I'm talking about program, that boundary, that program itself is a team, or you can say team of teams. And it also have few roles, a release train engineer. We'll talk about why we call it release train engineer in a moment. We have a system architect, the entire system that all the teams are working on, a architect for that, a product manager or product management team, and a business owner. So all those combinedly makes one program. I have multiple teams and four prominent role. Multiple teams can work on Kanban, few team can work on Scrum, and all the team will be governed by these three role, release train engineer, system architect, product manager, and business owner. Now, in scale agile framework, this particular structure is called essential safe. The essential safe, if you are not having multiple teams making one program, you are not using safe or you are not working on safe. Now we'll talk about if we have multiple program like this. So in a large organization, it's possible, right? We can have multiple program like this. In that case also, we'll be making it in one boundary and call it as large solution. In a large solution, we'll be having, having some roles like solution, solution train engineer, solution architect, solution management, and customer. So those are the four prominent member for one large solution. And 
that combine multiple program now you can see in this large solutions i have program each program have multiple teams and those roles so one large solutions is actually scaling up into uh, scaling up those program levels program is combined multiple teams large solution is combining multiple programs now this one this particular structure is called large solution safe now we'll be move ahead for a portfolio you can still have a portfolio without a large solution what that means is at some point of time I, if i am working on a portfolio i can still say that uh, this is a portfolio layer i don't need a large solution so what is the difference between the previous one and this one this is also called large solution i'm just naming it differently large solution and next one what i'm naming is portfolio where i have different roles epic owner enterprise architect and lean portfolio management so these are the three roles what we have for portfolio save now there's a difference okay um i need everyone to go on mute, please uh, Rohit Vadva, can you please go on mute? Uh, Nitesh, can you make Rohit as mute? Yeah, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> now on uh, portfolio, what we'll be uh, doing is uh, we'll try to find out a different, little difference than uh, large solution and portfolio. So here, if I have a large solutions and multiple large solutions i can make one portfolio so what does that means under a portfolio i can have two large solutions or two programs so both way is the combination is possible again i have an enterprise architect lean portfolio management and our epic owner those are always be part of my portfolio now over here if i'm talking about uh, full safe there are two things one was the previous one what we were talking about that was a portfolio safe portfolio safe is having program inside our large solution safe was having a program inside but our full safe that's actually talking uh, having your large solution inside so will uh, your this confusion will be clear after a moment let's see what we are talking about the difference what is the difference between a portfolio safe and a full safe? So a portfolio safe having program inside a portfolio. Our full safe is having large solution inside your portfolio. So large solution is having multiple programs. So if you are having different groups of program or different sets of multiple uh, program, you and you want to combine them, you will be create a portfolio safe. So your portfolio safe, if you are having program inside, it is called portfolio safe. If you are having sol large solution under a portfolio, we'll be having full safe. Let's try to understand that in a little different way. Some background noise is coming. Everyone, please go on mute. So now over here, uh, if I say portfolio, in the portfolio, this is what I will be having. And under a portfolio, I can have a large solution or I can have a program. So if I'm talking about portfolio, portfolio can have this kind of views and one portfolio can have a large solution under it or a program directly under it. All large solutions will be having program directly under that large solution. Our program will be having team directly under any program. So far, everyone, I believe it's clear that how the structure is actually happening, how we are making it organized. If you have a huge number of uh, team members and how you will be working on. Now, there is a rule that for one program, we should have uh, 50 to 125 members. If it is going for more than 125, we say, OK, uh, let's break it into two program and have a large solution and every time we'll be focusing on one common goal now let's uh, talk about the next one what are the different roles we have we have a uh, team program large solutions and portfolio these are the four layers we have and whatever we are talking about this is scale agile 4.6
okay there are some differences will come up and for uh, and 5.0 that we'll be talking about at the end of this discussion but let's try to understand what are the roles we have for team level we have scrum master for uh, team level again we have product owner and development team where we will be having team members in a program we have released an engineer we have product managers and we have system architect and business owner large solution we have solution train engineer we have solution management we have solution architect and customer and if i talk about portfolio lean portfolio management epic owner and enterprise architect so these are the roles we have now we'll talk about uh, what are the work items or execution items that we do as a team level everyone you already have worked on user story and uh, you have worked on subtasks you have created bugs uh, if you are working on jira or rally those are all, all we have but what scale agile prescribed is you have user stories and enablers under team level when we talk about program will be having features and enablers that means one feature can have multiple user story one program enabler can have multiple team enabler that is how it's structured in the large solutions will be having capability so one capability can have multiple features and similarly one large solution enabler can have multiple program enabler if i'm talking about portfolio the same items what we are calling as capability features or user story the higher level is epic so epic can have multiple capabilities and epic can have multiple features also if we don't have a large solution if the portfolio having the program directly then the feature will be aligned with epic and similarly a portfolio enabler can have large solution enabler or can have program enabler so this is very simple now now if we talk about the hierarchy how it's actually looks like so i have four layers portfolio large solution program and team at the portfolio layer we have epic where we can have capabilities or we can have capabilities can have features our capabilities every time will be having features now at the story level uh, story will be part of your features so all your features will be part of your uh, capability sometimes if you don't have a large solutions your feature will be directly aligned with epic now at the team level you can have uh, subtasks that for your uh, effort tracking and executions that's what you yeah, you will be having so this is a hierarchy of work items at different layers also we'll be having portfolio enabler large solution enabler program enabler and team enabler from top to bottom the hierarchy is one to many that means portfolio enabler can have multiple large solution enabler one large solution enabler can have multiple program enabler so that's how it's actually structured and when we'll be working on so if you are working on rally or version one the structure is already developed in such a way when we do certification classes those are actually two days workshops in that we actually do much more details analysis as we have a very short period of time i am going little faster okay now uh, the process or method or framework what we use so if i'm working on team primarily scrum xp or kanban that we use as a team level when we are working as a program we always use kanban for what we actually move into kanban all the features what we move in our kanban board in large solutions all the capabilities and for portfolio we'll be having kan uh, epics or the portfolio epic that's what we uh, do and at your team level you will always be working on scrum and kanban way now the prioritizations every time you heard about prioritizations if you have worked as a product owner or scrum master so there are different techniques we follow so a few of the common or known techniques of prioritizations that we follow as a team is affinity analysis mosco ranking dependency mapping pi planned whatever you have planned on pi that will come up but when we talk about program we do wsjf because here we are prioritizing our features and to prioritizing the features the technique is called wsjf weighted sorted job first so there is a calculations how we calculate that that's actually a little uh, lengthy to make you understand at this point of time but uh, that's actually very good proven prioritization techniques 
And the same way we do in large solutions when we are prioritizing our capabilities. When we have epics, we do a different uh, way. We do financial and strategic decisions that actually help the portfolio prioritization with which one will go first. And based on that, we do a breaking down of that epic into multiple large solutions or multiple features. Okay, let's try to understand the time boxes, how much time it takes. So as a team level, it takes two week iterations or it's prescribed by Scale Agile that you should go for two weeks uh, iteration or sprint. Sprint is actually a typical uh, scrum uh, typology where you actually talk about scale agile they mention it as iteration you can still do uh, three weeks or one week whatever you do but based on the scale agile prescriptions two week is the best recommended uh, iteration duration now when we talk about program one program there is a life cycle called pi or program increment it's of 10 weeks so 10 weeks in either way you can say it's five sprint if I am having each iteration is two weeks and program is taking 10 weeks, that means five weeks. We'll look into that diagram in very details in a moment. Let's uh, wait for a couple of minutes. And large solutions, this is actually aligned uh, with program increment. And if I'm talking about portfolio, it's a continuous flow. So continuous flow in the sense uh, that so uh, we'll be having our Kanban board within a Kanban board will be moving them in a flow. There is no time box and our large solutions is aligned with our program uh, increment based on if we have a one PI of 10 weeks, it's having little uh, more at the bef uh, before the PI starts and little more one week or three days at the end of the PI. Okay, let's try to understand this one. So this is very typical uh, diagram that you can see that every team have a common iterations. They are starting on the same day, ending on the same uh, same day. So this is what we are doing. We are planning our capacity. Uh, we are doing iteration planning. We are not yet in scale, scale agile. This is what I am talking about. This is uh, what we have planned for and different team have different release dates. And every uh, team is doing some daily scrum and we are going for uh, till 10 sprint. This is, I think, and within every sprint, we are doing analysis, development, testing, and many activities. And I think everyone you able to map that on your day-to-day -day activities, this is what we are doing. At the end of every sprint, we are doing some iteration demo or sprint review or iteration retrospective that everything we are doing at the yellow level. Uh, blocks what we are looking into now when we are working on scaled agile this is one pi is for five weeks so what we'll be doing uh, sorry five sprint or 10 weeks so what we will be doing is let's divide all those 10 into two sections and that will be continuous five sprint then five sprint then again five sprint then again five sprint that way it will be going now I have iteration one, two, three, four, five. I have made it at one block. Then I have iteration six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That we have one block. So okay, now it's actually uh, making sense that okay we have removed the release now, but we have distributed uh, all the iterations that we are doing in five, five blocks. Now what Scale Agile says okay if I am doing that I'll name the first one as PI one and the second. Uh, block is PI2. So in PI1, I'll be having multiple teams. They are working on their independent sprint, but after five sprint, I'll be starting as a new PI. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about P, uh, program increment one, what I have observed, so they are not doing any uh, development analysis at the sprint five, and they have actually moved into sprint uh, to the next iteration. So I can see when I mentioned it's a five week sprint, but actually it has sprint one, two, three, four, and then fifth one goes to the next iteration. So it's actually having five, but they are using the time for the fifth week for some different purposes. So it's actually not five sprint, it's actually four sprint or four iterations, but 10 week of time. So every beginning of the, every PI, they do a PI planning. For an example, if you start a sprint, you do a sprint planning. Similarly, you do a PI planning at the beginning and at the end, you do a innovations and inspect and adapt. So that's for the entire PI. For your every iterations, you do retrospective, 
here for every pi we call add innovations and planning or inspect on adapt activity so that innovations if you see at the end of one pi one pi is actually merging with another pi with the iterations that we call ip iteration so innovations and planning iteration it's not a construction iterations but it's coming at the at it's coming between the two iterations so in that we close one pi and start one pi so pi planning we start with for uh, this pi planning we are doing it for the next iterations and this inspect and adapt that's the heartbeat of uh, your all agile that inspect adapt and transparency is the primary area that we do at the end of every iterations and that takes kind of 10 days or two weeks 10 working days so this is how we actually structure now if i look into that i have a program and within that program i do a program increment and at the team level we do iteration one two three four then i do innovation and planning we start with pi planning every iteration now what we do the name we can still change it something like that these many organizations that give the iterations name something like that if it is a p1 increment or program one uh, program increment one they name the iteration as p1.1 p1.2 p1.3 and p1.4 similarly when we start with p2 we do p2.1 and all the teams follow a same team name for the same duration so that's a common way of using a naming convention now let's try to understand what we uh, have uh, the demo or the release or uh, you can do a integrations demo from all the teams and that's happen at the program level so at the end of every sprint they integrate their work and do a common demonstration and that's actually happen at the end of every sprint this is what uh, that's how all the teams combine their work in an iterative way instead of waiting for a common time for after three sprint or four sprint now let's try to understand um, when we uh, work item in time box how actually that works if we are working on some of uh, the pi how actually the features actually come up so for an example uh, when we are doing our pi planning we plan some feature that's feature one and when we are planning these are the stories actually committed by team one and there are four stories come for feature one three stories are going to iteration one based on the capacity of iteration one and next stories goes to iteration two for team one the another story is actually came up once again that's for feature two and is actually taking by team one two stories they are taking for iteration two and two stories they are taking for iteration three now one more iteration uh, features came up and this uh, team two is actually taking that up for iteration two and iteration three which story will go to which iterations that actually have uh, dependency mapping so uh, when we do our training workshops for uh, scaled agile we simulate that game with uh, lots of exercise so it's kind of a four hours exercise we do a simulate the entire pi planning and that way you will be able to learn how exactly we are planning for which features will align with which uh, iterations and which team now there is another feature feature four uh, that is again planning by team two so that's how we will be planning and the third feature there is another features that's actually coming up at uh, team three level and this is uh, how it is actually coming up now most interestingly if you have observed there is one more area <coughs> sorry if you see that this story is coming to the uh, last iteration is iteration two so feature is actually ending at that iteration level for the this green feature the feature two and feature three it's going till iteration three that's where it's ending at the end of iteration three and the feature four is short one it's ending on iteration one so wherever this feature is ending all these stories must have closed by that so that's where we are planning so it's not the where the feature is ending where the stories are actually extending to the last sprint the feature will be that long on your program board so we'll be having uh, some discussion on program board 
the last one what we have for team three it's actually utilizing all this print for all these prints and it's going for uh, this one now based on scale agile uh, phenomenon they says all story should be complete in one iteration and all features should be completed in one PI or one program increment. If you think you are not able to do it, break the features into small features, do some analysis, look into your hypothesis of the feature and break it down into smaller features so that you can make it fit within one program increment. Let's uh, try to understand that uh, what the board I'm talking about. So everyone you already have worked on scrum board or Kanban board and it looks uh, typically like that you have a scrum board where I have defined in progress completed accepted and within that we'll be having different different uh, stories at different level for iteration one. For this is I'm just talking about team one board for iteration one. This is how it looks like for iteration two. I have uh, this uh, feature one and feature two because for iteration two I can see this uh, story four story 15 and 16 has actually committed so that's how my board will be looks like so every team will be having their board for every iteration separately but till the time all the iterations one two three fours are in executions the program board will be having one board and this is actually iteration three that's actually future it's not yet started and this is how it will be looks like for this one so now we'll talk about a program board where we'll be talking about these features in the program board uh, we are not talking about stories we are talking about features so if i see the team one they are actually working on feature one so on C all the feature one is actually taken by team one and they are completing it at iteration two so the feature one will be completing at iteration two similarly the green one is taken by team one and ending at iteration three so the in the program board it will be come on the iteration three I have similarly closing feature three at iteration one by team two and feature four is completed by uh, team two and this feature five is completed by team three at iteration four. There is a dependencies we uh, you can map that feature two is depend on uh, team two with some other features that you will be marking out in your program board and we'll do that exercise uh, whenever you will be if you have already have attended any skilled agile training you might have uh, able to correlate it if you are about to attend any training then you will be executing this um, activity the ladri the other side yeah divya uh, looking at the program increment and pro uh, program board, uh, I think feature three and feature four in program board are swapped. Feature two is three going, and four. Feature three. Three and should four. come in iteration three, and feature four should come in iteration one. Exactly. Yeah, that's correct. So feature four should be in at feature one. You are exactly correct. So uh, yeah. So this is what it should be looks like. Let me just move it right away so that. You should not uh, because feature four. That's actually very good catch. Thank you. Okay, so this okay. is how it will be looks like. So your uh, feature four will be ending on iteration one, and feature three will be ending on iteration three. Exactly. Okay, let's uh, proceed with the next one. So planning and defining common goals. Uh, so at the team level, we define a goal for iteration and that we call iteration goal or sprint goal at the program level we define a pi objectives what's the objectives of this program increment so when we are working on our projects we have multiple iterations at the beginning of every iterations we'll be having independent goal for team level and sprint level and there are see how many goals we are having for if, uh, all the teams so there are multiple goals we have for one programs as a team level but if i'm talking about uh, increment uh, a program increment will be having one pi objectives for the entire program so if I start with a PI planning end with an innovations and inspect within that you can one team can have multiple sprint goals because there are multiple uh, iterations they're working on but at a team as a program level they will be having one PI objectives and PI objectives uh, we will talk about in details in some time. Uh, on the interest of time I'll need to uh, go a little faster because there are lots of other areas that we need to cover. So now uh, there is something called ART or it's called agile release train. So what we talked about so far, let's try to understand in your 
program backlog i have enabler feature 1 feature 2 feature 3 and uh, some other features and enablers this is actually part of your program backlog now i have multiple teams so let's say each card those are different different teams they will be carrying these features to completion so they will be working on uh, this is their iterations these are the different swim lanes on the basis of teams i have iteration one two three four similarly again five six seven eight in between we'll be having innovation and planning and these are your goal for pi1 and pi2 and this is what i have a rail track that will be carrying it over so i have this area the top area is my program area the bottom area is my team area so i have a train that's just assume it's my agile release train so when i'm doing a pi planning i, I know this is what i'm planning for pi1 and then i'll do something for pi2 but at this point of time i'm doing something for my pi1 <laughs> Now, when I'm doing PI planning, I'm, at the time of PI planning, I pick some stories. And let's assume during the PI planning, based on whatever uh, the way we have planned, we have picked enabler one, feature three, feature two, and feature four. And based on that planning, all the team members create stories at different level, plan for them at the different iteration and every team got some stories based on whatever we have planned so enabler will be having so if i actually uh, compare with the color enabler one will be having this many items feature three will be having this orange one and that's how we have planned for these are the stories under some features now when we start the execution we know at the end of uh, fourth iterations we'll be doing innovations and planning inspect and adapt and after that we'll do another planning once we have planned we'll start executing and the feature goes towards the pi and each team move their stories from doing to done and every iterations they will find out okay this is actually earlier it was at to do now that has moved to done and that's where we complete one pi that's how we uh, work on uh, how that agile release train is actually carry all the teams work in uh, with them now we'll talk about little uh, theories on the agile release train so when i talk about agile release train if we talk about people a virtual organizations of 5 to 12 teams or 50 to 125 individuals that plans commits and execute together so it's not that that team is only doing or this team is only doing we are managing a from pi no everyone work together and deliver a value what is PI or program increment? Program increment is a fixed time box. Default is 10 weeks or that is recommended. Synchronizations, how we synchronize? There are cadence and synchronization and synchronized iterations in a cadence within PI. So synchronizations is very important within agile release trends and that synchronize all the teams, program features, program management, and all involved uh, members, it synchronize their work and they have one common missions aligned to a common mission via single program backlog so all the team members have one pi objectives that they focus and that they work on so if i'm talking about agile release train it's defined new functionality it's implement it has some acceptance uh, test for the entire pi or entire art have one acceptance test then finally it's deployed and that's actually produce your new product go for uh, ready for release and go into a devops pipeline or release pipeline whatever we are using we are not going into that direction now and that's actually what we call agile release trains activity for one program increment and that's uh, that's uh, the agile release train is actually uh, your uh, the main core area that you will be learning how agile release train works and the pi planning what we are talking about that's the heartbeat of scale agile framework so now I will talk about how we can bind program and team layers. So if I have program layers and team layers is below, I know uh, we have uh, we need some facilitations to work on Agile. And everyone you might have heard that Scrum Master is the facilitator, uh, uh, servant leader. So if I am having program layers and team layers, as it uh, we have. Uh, something called work item alignment work item alignment development how we will be integrating how we'll integrate our different planning and how we'll integrate feedback loop 
So if I'm talking about facilitations, we call Scrum of Scrum is one area where at the team level, we'll be having multiple Scrum Masters and RT from the program level, they synchronize with each other. And that's where all the information that needs to be shared can be cascaded down from RT to everyone or within the team. Similarly, if I'm talking about work item alignment, your stories, your features, how that actually needs to be executed, that needs always an uh, alignment, a synchronization, dependency mapping. So that's called PO sync. And the POs from all the teams and your program management syncs with that. Similarly, we have a system demo for development integrations. At the end of every iteration that I'm talking about S1 for Sprint 1, or you can say I1 as iteration 1, every team members, they combine, integrate, and do a system demo at a program level to the entire system team or the program team. For integrated planning, how we do uh, integrated planning, all the team members, they uh, participates in PI planning, the heartbeat of the scaled agile framework. And that's run by a agile release train with a group of team members at the program level. And everyone plan for all these stories that we actually learned uh, quite a uh, minute before. Now integrated feedback loop, inspect and adapt. At the team level, we do a retrospective, but at the end of all the iterations, we call it as IP iterations, where we do inspect and adapt. And that's actually inspect and adapt event. That's what we are doing. The first two sections that we are talking about, ART sync, this is called ART sync, the uh, Scrum of Scrum and PO sync, combinedly called ART sync. And ART is Agile Release Train sync. Okay, now there are a few principles. I'll not go into principles in details. There are 12 uh, Agile principles. You know that there are four values and 12 principles. I'm not going into the principles in details. Scaled Agile also follow the same principles with some modifications or they have uh, using the same inherited that principles and make their own principle to fit the agile in a scaling environment or in an enterprise environment. Similarly, we have uh, nine principles based on 4.6 safe lean agile principles there. And when you will be getting uh, your training, we'll talk about all these principles with exercise, uh, fun activities and theories so that you can understand how these principles is actually uh, helping scaling agile and you can actually understand that. Now, we'll talk about uh, the primary area, the structures of SAFE. Uh, there are a few core values. So built-in quality, program executions, alignment, and transparency. Those are the four core values of uh, Scaled Agile. The core competencies we have as of now 4.6, lean portfolio management, business solutions, and lean system engineering, DevOps release on demand, team and technical agility and lean agile leadership scale agile also uh, have uh, something called uh, safe house of lean and we'll talk about that you can um, read more about uh, these core competencies from this link uh, scaleagile.com uh, oblique uh, competencies now when i'm talking about uh, the safe uh, safe house of lean Let's try to understand what we have. They have a bottom is leadership because everywhere they need the leadership support is always there. And once there are four pillars we have, we have respect, people and culture, we have flows, we have innovations and relentless improvement. And it's actually all these pillars along with leaderships, they have a come, they generates a value. And this is called safe house of lean. I'm not going much details into each of these items because this will take lots more time if I want to go uh, deep dive into it. I have a couple of more areas that we'll be talking about. Now, this is a history of Scaled Agile. It was started in 2011, then they came up with 1.0, 2.0. They made lots of modifications. And why this modification is happening? Because uh, the Scaled Agile, the fundamental of Scaled Agile is uh, inspect use it means use it then inspect and adapt the best practices and they are continuously adapting the best structure that fits in the dynamic industry that's changing every day now as of 2019 the latest version was 4.6 
from January onwards, we'll be having a scale agile new versions. That's uh, from starting from 2020. That is 5.0. And what's new in 5.0? Let's try to understand a very high level what we are having new in 5.0. So this will be your uh, scale agile 5.0 entire framework. What we actually learned so far that we have essential safe or large solutions or portfolio uh, layers. These are the different layers we have and the competencies you will be having on the left hand side and the four uh, your core values are this will be coming on the right hand side so we have one two three four five six six components on left at the bottom we have uh, your uh, leadership the agile leadership at the bottom now let's try to understand what actually changed what that what was not there on 4.6 and what they are adding because why this uh, actually I'm talking about many people they are asking for the certifications and we are asking them to stop it for now let's do that in January because January you will be having a training on 5.0 with the latest version so that's where let's try to understand what's actually new coming up in 5.0 the entire focus is actually they are changing it to business agility and that's uh, the industry or uh, the enterprises they are actually realize that if you focus on business agility they get a maximized value they have changed these all uh, competencies that was actually they have swapped it earlier this competency section was in right and this uh, core area of working was in left now they have swapped it and this uh, lean agile leadership is still there there is one more area that they have uh, introduced is organization agility and continuous learning culture that they have earlier there were five competencies now they have seven competencies so they have added two competency organizational agility and continuous learning culture so i'm not going deep into what exactly the each competencies is <coughs> sorry so these are the two uh, competencies they have added and they have renamed two competencies. So these are the two competencies they have renamed. Earlier, this was uh, business solution and lean system engineering. Now they have changed it to enterprise solution delivery. And this one, what they had earlier called as DevOps and release on demand, they have changed it to agile product delivery. This is what is coming up from 5.0 and you will be getting trained if you are getting training anything on 5.0 with this new 5.0 now they have added one tab so what exactly the tab is if you actually go into scale agile framework website you will be able to see these diagrams multiple uh, different diagram they have for essential safe one tab for full safe they have one tab on their web page they have added one more tab where all these seven competencies they have and this diagram is actually uh, if you go into their website these are clickable if you can click it it will open a new page with lots of information there uh, over there and these are all the seven competencies the leadership always come up over uh, at the bottom and this is what they have added on their website now the seven competencies of business agility this is what we uh, look into the tab this is the same diagram but this is a very high level what are the seven competencies we have enterprise solution delivery agile product delivery team and technical agility at the bottom we have lean agile leadership then we have the strategy level it's actually divided into two areas one is strategy another is execution at the strategy side we have lean portfolio management organizational agility and continuous learning culture now one thing they have added or changed earlier they used to have something called team layer they now they don't have anything called team layer so if they have merged the program and team at one area and make it as essential there is no team anymore if you are working on scaled agile you'll have to start with essential you cannot work with just team they have added something called agile teams area on that particular tab where we have product owner scrum master it uh, earlier that was in the white area they have moved into this particular gray area for the essential safe and the system product management and rt they are combined into one particular box 
Now they have added a new features that call customer centricity or design thinking. They are enhancing within a essential safe. You first need to focus on how you are designing because if you, your design thinking is very important, if you are working with multiple teams involved for a long term goal for uh, multiple PIEs, how your uh, customer centricity and design think your how your design thinking is actually helping uh, customer. So your customer centric thinking will be evolve now over here uh, we have added uh, the continuous integrations and continuous uh, integrations and uh, at uh, the team level so earlier uh, it was not mentioned on their uh, this particular diagram but you can see that continuous explorations that is ce continuous integration that is ci and continuous deployment is part of uh, every team and within your team level execution one uh, important things if you already know that uh, there was something called stretch objectives that was earlier there that we uh, when we are doing a pi planning to define the pi objectives we said okay this is my committed objectives and these are my stretch objectives now from 5.0 there is nothing called stretch objectives but instead of stretch objectives they will say these are uncommitted and these are my pi objectives and bv is your business value so each pi objectives will be having some business values mm -hmm. so your stretch objectives that we used to know from 4.6 it will now come as uncommitted uh, pi objectives and that also have a business value Okay, so now uh, this is actually a little uh, program level. What I'll be doing is I'll be more focusing on the team level, essential level at uh, uh, this uh, side because uh, if I start going into a portfolio layer, it will be taking another uh, uh, one hour to find out what exactly the new changes has came up. So in this, uh, the strategy formulation, they have a strategy formulation guidelines. And over there, they have made some changes to include the portfolio context and distinctive competence. And that's uh, what the changes that's actually having at the enterprise level. Now their focus is also have uh, added a portfolio visions. So uh, right now from 4.6 to 5.6, 5.0, uh, you will be able to see there is another section came up at your portfolio layer. Or if you are using full safe or portfolio safe, you will be able to see these portfolio visions. Now earlier uh, they used to do uh, when we when you used to do a portfolio visions how you will be making your portfolio visions uh, till 4.6 they used to have a short analysis SWOT now uh, they have uh, they are using it uh, toes analysis they are using the same operations or thoughts or straights or weakness uh, strength and weakness that they are using the same thing but changed uh, the sequence and make it as a set based system. So what exactly the set based system is, whatever the current state is, they explore the possibilities of different directions and they evaluate each state from the um, uh, distributed directions and then make a decisions to uh, find out what will be the best future state portfolio result or portfolio canvas. So this is where they are actually diverging the thinking make multiple options possible and then they are making evaluating this each options then making a decisions to find out which one will be best for uh, their canvas so when we are talking about enhanced safe uh, lean startup or epic life cycle so that is uh, you if you have talked about epic kanban flow or epic board uh, they have uh, one uh, these five boards, uh, five uh, columns or five workflow states, funnel reviewing, analyzing, portfolio backlog and done. Now they have added one more called implementing and MVP and preserve is also there. So the, it was, uh, they actually modified it in that way. Now this is uh, some uh, changes they have uh, brought in. They have not highlighted what exactly the changes is here, but this uh, diagram is got changed. This is for uh, your safe lean startup uh, uh, epic life cycle. So when you are actually having this particular diagram to looking into this diagram, they need to make some uh, to work on this status. They need to make some flow and that's your workflow states or workflows of your uh, epic board or your Kanban board or portfolio layers and they have make some uh, algorithm change at uh, this particular development states. 
Okay, so the safe house of lean, they have added few points. So if, when we are talking about respect for people and culture, flow, innovations and relentless improvement, there were multiple uh, sub items under that. They have added few items like uh, respect for people and culture. This is uh, under that they have added uh, uh, generative culture for, at flow. Uh, move from projects to products. So this is this takes lots of time uh, to understand. So once we do our training, we uh, focus on going into little deep. Uh, we already have uh, spent kind of an hour. I'll be load. Uh, I'll go a little faster now. In case anyone have some questions, we can have, take that at the end of the sessions. And then uh, the foundations lean agile leadership. So leaders uh, they have changed uh, some text at uh, over here earlier that was not there. Now, we learned that there were nine principle at 4.6. They have added one more principle. That's organize your value. That's uh, your 10th principle. They have added now scale agile will be having 10 principle instead of nine principle uh, principle. Now they have their implementation roadmap. So this was there for uh, at 4.6. What they have uh, done is they have added LPM at the beginning and at the end at both the places. That's uh, LPM is lean portfolio management. And they have added this lean portfolio management at both the area. And they have added this agile product and solution management and new competencies or new, uh, these are all certifications. What you are actually looking into, this will be all certification and they need some people with these certifications or this skill set they should be working on when we already have the teams trained and uh, they start working on some people they need it at this step so this is what we have waterfall or ad hoc agile from there we are uh, this is your tipping point go safe and once we'll execute or extend our portfolio once we have started working on we need an LPM at this uh, area. And they are actually mentioned that which area will need an advanced scrum master, which area we need a uh, scale agilist, where we need a POPM, everything uh, they have mentioned here. Okay. New uh, measures and grow assessment. This is one matrix they have created. Uh, this area I still need to explore. But from there, you can actually measure your health, how you will be, uh, how you are actually assessing your maturity, how you are growing. So you can actually uh, look into that area by different areas, facilitate effective uh, self-assessment of business agility, analyze the result, identify the growth opportunities, prioritize and take actions, integrate learning and uh, celebrate success. Those are the six steps of measuring your progress and that they have introduced with their uh, new, uh, this is actually this picture what we are referring, that's called big picture. So scale agile big pictures diagram they have introduced. Now we'll talk about what are the certifications primarily scale agile provides that we also uh, conduct. So why uh, before we do into the uh, go into uh, what are the certificates? Let's try to understand why safe uh, certification because in the industry there are multiple certifications available. We have CSM, we have PSM, uh, we I think uh, there are Scrum of Scrum, but scale agile certifications is uh, required because majority of the organizations majority of the industries they are moving towards scaled agile csm psm or any other uh, scrum certification those are focused into a team level of certifications but if you are growing uh, or if you're going into a uh, bigger organizations or a enterprise level organization even if you are working on a team you need to understand how to collaborate with other teams how you can manage multiple teams because every day you will be progressing within your career and someday you need to work on anything bigger than right now what you are doing so having a scale agile certifications give you an opportunities or give you an better uh, knowledge to understand how a large organization works and how you can work as an individual contributor or as a team contributor or or as a manager managing that teams how you will be working on that environment so let's try to understand there are a few certifications that uh, scale agile does and we also provide that certified safe practitioners that's for team if you are a team member uh, 
you can you need to do that if you're a developer or you feel just a team member of any of the scale environment you can attend that particular certification certified scrum master definitely if you are working as a scrum masters for a scaled agile environment you need to have that scaled agile certifications if you have a certified advanced scrum master it gives a little manje if you are uh, working on a scrum master with uh, multiple additional responsibilities you will be doing this is a little more advanced or matured uh, area when you will be doing for scale uh, advanced scrum master now popm uh, primarily what we used to call as product owner or product manager this is uh, for product owner and product management uh, that you will be working as a team level and as well as your portfolio levels we have safe agilist or that's also known as leading safe that's for all managers or leaders or change agents they they need to understand now in the industry what we have observed that as this is a little uh, uh, management role certification the people who are going for uh, scrum master certifications or who were going for the leads or uh, say for team members they are also going for safe as uh, this particular leading safe because in this particular uh, certification even if it is for two days but it talks about much more details much more uh, the course is much more area the exercise are much more detailed so that is one of the advantages many people are going on there but few people they are still sticking into scrum master we'll talk about the comparison in a little later then we have uh, devops practitioners we have um, Uh, agile software engineers we have for ar architects there are certifications we have a lean portfolio management we have certification and safe agile product and solution management so this is they have recently uh, uh, introduced this certification also we do now let's try to understand a very high level comparisons on the four popular certifications uh, that uh, people are going into the scrum master this is for a new scrum master who need to perform the role existing scrum master who would like to understand the role in the context of a safe enterprise and team leads who want to understand the scrum master's role safe released an engineer who wants to coach the scrum master this is what a scrum master uh, who will get the benefit now for popm who will get the benefit the product managers product line managers product owner business owners and business analyst similarly that can be uh, that can also give benefits to solution manager or portfolio managers uh, or enterprise solutions and system architects if they know what exactly popm works skilled agilist or the leading safe that's uh, what i was talking about it's actually good for executives leaders manager directors cios and vps because uh, that they those people will start acting as a uh, change agent or development qa and infrastructure management program and project managers product and product line management portfolio managers pmos and process leads enterprise systems and solution architects all manager level uh, roles they goes for skilled agilist there is advanced safe advanced scrum master that is for existing scrum master but team leaders project managers and other assuming the role of agile team facilitator in a safe or enterprise agile context is little advanced than uh, scrum master It, uh, sometimes they work as uh, or managing multiple teams not directly as a scrum master but they know how scrum master works so they can act as a, a multiple team scrum master engineering and development manager responsible for agile execution and coaching teams including team so sometimes when we start working on scrum master we just do the facilitations but at some point of time you may need to do some coaching to the team or you may need to coach to the organization so advanced scrum master will be the best fit for them so this is what we had uh, we have some upcoming calendar for the uh, next uh, january with uh, 5.0 and uh, this is what we have uh, for january uh, we have 11 12 for scrum master 18 19 for leading safe and 15 16 for safe popm and uh, before we uh, hand over this discussion to nitesh i'll just uh, ask if anyone have any questions that you want to ask you can unmute and ask me hi nilatri hey. this is suti here hey suti yeah uh i wanted to ask uh, i have done csm certification Okay. I'm an existing Scrum Master. Okay. Which certification from Safe will be best suitable for me? Okay. What's your career goal? 
you want to be as a scrum master or you want to go as a coach you want to do a rt uh, anything that uh, you have visualized so far uh, the next uh, probably is a product owner see a scrum master and product owner are two different role altogether because scrum master is servant leader is a kind of going towards a coach but if you are going for a product owner or product manager that's taking you to a different directions of your uh, career because product owner is always a product person so you need to be have a very detailed understanding of the domain and you will be uh, the product owner product management uh, the bridge between the stakeholders and the development team so uh, popm is for product owner if you really want to go towards P uh, product ownerships popm will be good for you but if you want to enhance your certifications at one level and you want to do uh, even as a scrum master the scale uh, safe scrum master is better i'll also suggest you can go for safe agilist that uh, safe agilist is give you a entire idea of scale agile and that actually can help you out to move towards popm or rte or scrum master okay the advanced one sasm sasm uh, it's actually advisable if you already a safe scrum master then go for sasm because in sasm they leave lots of things they already taught at sasm so sasm is a little advanced and it's expected that if you already have worked even if you don't have the certification if you worked as a, a scale agile role then uh, sasm you can go for but if you have not worked on scale agile role in your organization then attend the SS, uh, ssm first and then after a, one uh, six month or something you can attempt that okay thank you so much no problem and ladri the weather side hey divya uh, morally here okay um, hi morally uh, let's uh, divya uh, complete the questions then we'll take you uh, come to you morally thank you so um i have also done a certified scrum master uh, certification but that was only uh, like to get a hold of uh, the concepts Uh, so right now i am into ba uh, cum functional qa role okay so i am confused on popm and uh, safe agilist uh, certification popm because if you already have worked as a ba you might have worked as a ba for any particular domain for an example finance domain or healthcare domain or manufacturing industry something um, like that so i am into insurance domain and i have uh, worked as a qa but uh, my transition had started as a ba so i am interested to go for a product owner role but then uh, you also mentioned that uh, the a safe agilist is uh, good for a, a qa person i will do development team i was not a scrum master or so you are owner. you are a automation qa or manual qa right now i am a manual qa but i am enhancing my skills to be okay see uh, from if you are doing a manual qa that means you have lots of information on the functionality side or uh, right. the domain side so popm will be better uh, for you because you will be uh, you are not uh, looking to go into a leadership or change agent type of role Uh, right. you you are going into a morely a product person that's what you are actually targeting so for that popm will be better for you okay thank you no problem okay morely yeah see actually i am working uh, i have um, almost close to 20 years experience i worked in different roles as a okay. lead auditor um, project manager now i am a lead technical writer in in an organization called symphony retail so basically i am new to certification in my previous uh, organization i worked in the agile environment okay okay now which is the best i am not into coding uh, initially i started my career as a coding writer. right right i am not into coding and uh, given this kind of a background which is the best certification so right now what exactly you are doing sorry, you are sorry. lead i have uh, another my question hello hello yeah carry on please the second part is um, if if the training that you are suggesting hmm. will that happen in bangalore so that is my second part uh, will that uh, happen in bangalore yeah okay let me uh, answer your first question uh, to uh, answer that questions uh, let me understand what currently exactly you are doing right now means what what are the nature of work you are doing 
I am basically responsible for building uh, user manuals, online help, and uh, relief notes. Uh, okay. Um, you so it's uh, I'm trying to find out uh, what nature. So you already have worked documentation. on documentation. Documentation. Okay, but uh, you already have worked on uh, development uh, at your earlier state of career. Then. Yeah. So, but what's your goal? Means uh, we, you want to continue doing that, or you want to move into one prominent? Because uh, documentations, I don't see that have a prominent role in the industry. Because if you want to go for a next job change, and if you say I just do documentation, I don't think that will sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the reason why I'm looking at uh, agile environment. Right. So maybe you can uh, see if you already have experience of 20 years, you know how the development life cycle is. And yeah, yeah. if you uh, at if you start to do work as a scrum master, that's actually easy to start with a new role as a scrum master because you cannot do architect role. You cannot do a PO, uh, POPM role because you don't have the product knowledge. You don't uh, have the DevOps knowledge. So scrum master will be best that you can start with you in that way. You can actually align whatever you have learned so far uh, as a developer, as a uh, facilitator, uh, and you can start become uh, acting as a scrum master as well. Okay. Okay. So you say that. Uh, yeah, Scrum Master. Now, if I talk about uh, training, uh, having a training in Bangalore, we can definitely do it in Bangalore if we have enough count. Because for this scale agile training, we always, uh, I always prefer to have at least twelve member because we do lots of exercise where we need teams of teams to simulate our PI planning and all the activities. Yeah. So if we have less team member, it's not very helpful for the team to understand. So for okay. Bangalore also, if we have enough uh, candidates, we can come to Bangalore. Bangalore, or uh, if we are conducting in Delhi, we can find out if you want to come, how we can uh, do that. Okay, because I am basically based out of uh, Bangalore. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I, anyway. So that's uh, maybe if we can connect one on one. Or maybe. Yeah, so uh, you can actually connect with uh, Nitesh. Uh, Nitesh will be talking about much more details how you will be able to connect for all those and we can take it uh, from there. Yeah, good. Fine. Yeah, so Burli, uh, we can connect separately. Yeah, and uh, uh, I will share the details how we are we can conduct either in Bangalore or in NCR, then uh, how we can yeah. uh, make it successful for you. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Okay, is there any other questions anyone have? Any doubts? Any uh, feedback from more, anyone? Sorry, sorry, one more question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how good is the job market outside of India for this? Uh, outside of India, if you just mention the country name, I can help you better. If you actually talked about uh, how it is in USA, that will be a different answer. How it is in uh, Nepal, that will be different. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So Generally outside is US and uh... yeah, US, UK, uh, Australia. Uh, those are already working on safe much before uh, India have started. USA primarily. Australia have started uh, at the kind of same time. UK is doing it better uh, Saudi uh, they have started on uh, Malaysia they are started on agile not yet in a uh, safe very much they are doing it Dubai is also doing that those are the prominent countries they are working on okay and would you help us basically I'm uh, Frank I'm trying to look at uh, outside of India market so so that's where okay I we can actually talk about that uh, I think 101 uh, and find out so probably you can connect with Nitesh we'll uh, see how that can possible yeah okay so Nitesh if you can let me know how best how best we can connect and uh, that will be good. yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, hi Niladri I have just one question hey Jadip, yeah tell me uh, I can uh, uh, understand your voice okay uh, carry on please uh, so uh, if I want to uh, do some SPC so is it beneficial for Okay, so uh, what's your primary goal of doing SPC? So that's very important. If you are, uh, see, if you want to implement uh, scale agile within your organizations, it's good. If your organization is sponsoring for your SPC, it's good because SPC is a costly certification. I think something 2.5 lakhs or 2 lakhs kind of. Hmm. Now, uh, if you are paying it from your own pocket, 
then uh, you definitely have a goal that why you are paying that much of money right now uh, there are two reasons people do spcs one they uh, start they wants to become a trainer and give certifications now the another one is they wants to uh, implement scale agile within their organization first if you are uh, thinking that if you will be implementing in, in your organizations or maybe for a job change as a agile coach that may be a uh, beneficial uh, but uh, nowadays uh, i don't see that uh, just for doing training uh, going for a certificate because scale agile have lots of restrictions on the training right now so for just trainer in training purpose uh, paying it from own pocket i will not suggest if uh, your organization is sponsoring definitely you can go for that now my goal is for consulting uh, activities as a um, um, the job so job uh, see um, when i'm talking about agile uh, transformation as a consultant mm, or yes, yes. Uh, yeah agile, agile transformations or somewhere implementing agile uh, primarily scale agile because spc will be required if you uh, if they are implementing scale agile now everywhere they look for their experience if they uh, they how much uh, brand or how much known that person is what their feedback is and at the same time it, just because of i'm having a certification does not make me a agile implementer or agile coach you need to have lots of that experience of doing it because all organizations they work differently totally different nature so that experience is actually come up but at any point of time always whenever you are applying for anything if you have a certification where the 10 resume came seen nine don't have a certification you only have a certification your resume will be top of the list okay yeah because certification is always a good options to get shortlisted and now once you have uh, shortlisted then uh, how you will be cracking that so that's way actually for us how uh, we work is whoever is taking certification from us we make a group of them and we uh, make a webinar only for those uh, participants of the trainers to talk with them have debates have discussions and find out what problems they have in their current role how they will be solving it out so those are the different areas we continuously uh, get in connect with all the members those got certificate so everyone if you start get the certifications and don't do uh, the discussions don't uh, you are out of touch then if eventually after 6 month you will forget so we continuously make live projects or give some ones to do some presentations so that activities we do okay thank you niladri yeah, thanks anyone have any other questions hi niladri hey uh, what's your name please shahid yeah hi said so first of all like and i would like to say sorry that like you know i could not able to hear you voice from since starting the session okay and end of the session finally i got it okay <laughs> so my question to you like you know currently i'm working as a senior test team okay can you speak little loudly your voice is very feeble can you able to hear me now yes it's better now yes so i am saying that currently i am working as a senior test engineer having 7 years of experience okay so so i am like in you know, a bit confused like in you know, which one is the best to, whether i should i go for the ba or the scrum master because uh, i would like to be like you know the communicate with the people so you are working as a test manager right that senior right? test engineer senior test engineer and you are doing manual testing automation testing so both okay automation see if you are doing automation testing you like which one better automation testing or uh, uh, manual testing see if you like manual testing you should go towards popm uh, if you like automation testing maybe you can uh, look for a software engineer or architects or devops because uh, automation testing is one part of devops when we talk about devops uh, the continuous integration continuous exploration continuous testing and continuous deployment those comes under uh, devops but again uh, scrum master is uh, very easy to start on the agile path so if you see because nowadays i have observed when uh, many organization connect me to take interviews for them and i observe there there are many people uh, they wanted to do scrum master but don't have enough uh, that base level knowledge so to uh, go for a scrum master i'll suggest 
you need to think it from uh, your heart from your bottom that okay i will do the scrum master and i am the scrum master if you think okay let's go and try for a scrum master if it works it will not work so go for a scrum master training just think yourself that now onwards i will gather all information on scrum master we have a group uh, you can continuously talk with us clarify your doubts we'll be solving you uh, solving all your uh, the scrum master related doubts and eventually if you feel confidence you can do that i don't uh, think there will be a problem and i will suggest go for a scrum master now if you really wants to be technical because if you are talking about you are doing both uh, uh, automation like, testing uh, also so automation testing which tool you use we use a selenium so you are just uh, doing uh, uh, the browser based testing right correct correct yeah because automation testing is not only that automation testing correct. have many other uh, uh, areas so uh, exactly. i think i will not suggest you to go on uh, the devops side right now because devops uh, i they on the entire devops uh, area the selenium will be maybe 1% or 2% of the entire devops uh, okay. the tools we have so um, so i i'll suggest you go for either ssm or popm because if you are working as a manual test i think you will be having a domain knowledge as well uh, so if it is an insurance or product or e-commerce you will be having much more idea i don't know how much idea you have on that product if you think you have a very deep knowledge on that particular product you can uh, go for a popm otherwise uh, you can move to a scrum master okay so yeah. how does it like you know benefit me for the scrum master to the next level uh, how hard it is to uh, i didn't get that Means how does it benefit me to like you know to take my profile my career to the next level if i go for the scrum master? see it's not easy many people in the industry they think uh, scrum master job is easy and it's a easy switch uh, but whenever they face the interview uh, i don't know uh, everyone experience but uh, even if you pass the interview when you start working on if uh, you need to put slot your uh, effort to uh, understand how scrum master should behave because it's not just a theory that you will be implementing there is some experience also you will be implementing there so uh, you need to be involved on in lots of discussions or webinars or if you don't if you can't get the experience because experience you cannot gathered in uh, just one month uh, but you can actually uh, listen to different um, people listen to videos uh, attend discussions on debates and that way those discussion will give you lots of opportunity to learn different cases and that will help you out it's not easy but it's not hard as well okay yeah and now uh, one more questions like you know what is the main objective for the scrum master what is the main objects of the scrum master yes okay so main objectives you need to uh, work as a servant leader and facilitate the you will be uh, protect the scrum process that's uh, the scrum way how it's actually work you will be working as a neutral to the team neutral to uh, your product owner you are not a manager but you need to facilitate and make the team productive make the team uh, deliver values they understand the scrum values as a coach you will be facilitating as a coach you will be training them there are lots of areas that you will be working on you don't need to have a technical expertise but in case some impediments came up you know how to get that resolved how to take help from someone how to highlight that how to make uh, your entire development transparent how uh, your development is going on you should understand how to facilitate uh, to inspect the current way and if uh, there is some changes required how we will facilitate to adapt the new changes so those are the areas as scrum master skills you need okay thank you so much no problem okay any other questions okay then uh, nitesh i will hand it over to you uh, you can uh, speak uh, whatever you have points and Nitesh? Yeah, just, just. Okay, so uh, just, uh, I hope you guys can hear me. So any question, Anup, Balram, Chetan, Divya, Guru, Haryom, Jwadeep, Khyati, Kishor, Ravi, Richa, Rohit, Sanjay, Shahid, Sulab, Swati, Sweetie, Atanu. 
Yeah, hi Nitesh. I just uh, I just checked that uh, POPM certification is on twenty fifth, twenty sixth of uh, January, right? Right, right. So kindly uh, uh, book me in for that, please. I hope the, okay, the seats okay. are available. Yeah, yeah. So okay. we have uh, seats for that. So thank you so much, Divya, for this uh, registration. And, and um, uh, thank you, Niladri, yeah. for a uh, great uh, session. It was really like. Welcome. Uh, I I'll also you. like to have uh, feedback from everyone once Nitesh is done. Uh, thank you, Divya. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, uh, guys, uh, the pro, uh, the doing the webinar, the objective is that uh, I have seen that I have a couple of. Uh, I mean, not that much experience, but approximately uh, 14, 15 years in IT industry. So I have seen that still people have a doubt, not confused, but doubt that where they should go for like uh, uh, in SAFE, in Scrum Master, POPM, or Agilis, or which certification they go for. So the objective of doing this webinar, and thank you so much to Niladri that uh, he has taken time for us in his busy schedule and, uh, and given guidance to us that where people should go for. So again, I'm requesting to each one of you that if you have any question, any query, please uh, come forward and ask here. This is the opportunity that we can ask direct query from Nilati. So the idea was only uh, to conduct this webinar to resolve your thoughts or resolve your queries if, if there is anything. Apart from that, as Niladri has shared that uh, we have a, a workshop on SAFE that is for Scrum Master on 11th, 12th January for uh, uh, safe leading safe it is on uh, January 18th 19th and for a POPM it is 25th and 26th of January uh, the pricing and other part we you guys can connect me separately I mean I hope you all are uh, in the whatsapp group if not then I just share my number in the same uh, in the same uh, uh, chat just a moment Okay, so till the time it is, uh, I'm just pinging the number. Okay, so uh, again asking guys any question, any doubt, uh, Anup, Balram, Chetan, Divya, Guru, Joyadeep, Khyati, Kishore, Ravi, Richa, Rohit, Sanjay, Sahid, Sulab, Sweetie, and Tanu. Nitesh Shahidev. Yeah. So for the Scrum Master Certification, does it like you know prerequisites uh, any basic certification is required or should i directly go for the scrum masters so instead of me uh, yeah um, is the best person. see uh, basic certification is not required but basic knowledge of scrum uh, or uh, or agile is required okay thank yeah. you uh, hi uh, question Hello. Yes, Rohit, please ask. Yes, yes, yeah, uh, I just wanted to know uh, how safe POPM can help a functional tester uh, in his uh, career growth. See, uh, okay, uh, if I'm talk, if you are talking about functional tester to test some functionality, you need to understand uh, what exactly the expected function. So when we talk about testing, testing means you know what's exactly the desired state, and you are testing what exactly develop. Now that to understand the desired state, you need to have a much more details knowledge on a product. And product in the sense, the functionality expected by your stakeholders. And that's why if you are doing a functional testing, a POPM mm -hmm. uh, is talked about how in a scale agile framework or scale agile environment, product owner or product manager should work on what's their responsibilities. So if you uh, a functional test, if you're doing a functional testing at some point of time, you may want to move into a product role or you may want to move into a product management role. So POPM certification definitely give you much more advantage to work on a functional side of an enterprise. Okay, and like uh, how much experience uh, is required to do this? Uh, like, is there any eligibility criteria? See, or ideally uh, for any of the scaled agile certifications, uh, this is at least you should have worked on uh, 
two, three years on software development, understand the basic idea of Agile and Scrum. As a developer, if you are going for a developer in organizations, they are working on scaled agile. There is one training called Safe for Teams. They suggest you can go for that. How many years of experience you have? Uh, around seven. I think seven is sufficient enough. Have you uh, have any idea what exactly uh, Scrum is or Agile is, how it works? Yes, yes, I have, but I haven't got any uh, certification. Right. Yeah, certification is not mandatory. The knowledge is uh, required. Even if you don't have knowledge, uh, Agile Digest have a, a YouTube channel where you can go and find out all the Agile related videos with a lot more details. And you can uh, understand how exactly Agile works in just one week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Nilad. No problem. Okay, uh, is there anyone uh, have any queries or any questions? Anyone wants to give some feedback about your, what exactly your expectation was and what you actually got? Uh, hi, uh, this is Ravi. Hi, Ravi. Uh, what certification is best for project managers? POPM. POPM, okay. Yeah. And what would be the uh, safe edge list? Safe Agilist is for a leading safe. So pure PM is primarily little aligned with uh, product side. So pro when I'm talking about P when you're talking about PM, it's a product manager or project manager. Project manager. So for project manager, if you uh, are primarily doing the project management, go for leading safe then. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, anyone have any co other questions? Yeah, Niladri, Sulab here. Yes, yeah, Sulab, tell me. Yeah, so just want to ask, you have uh, mentioned uh, there is some capability thing. Right. Uh, right. What is that actually and how it is different from feature? Okay, so uh, features uh, are at your uh, program level and capabilities are at large solution level. So large solution level, they uh, name it as capability. One capability can have multiple features within it. So when uh, okay. you think, uh, when you do a large solutions, maybe one large solution have one capability that can mm -hmm. have three features. One feature is working by team A, another feature is working by team uh, B, another mm -hmm. feature is working by team three. So I can see one capability is developed in one iteration by three team. But one feature based on scaled agile, they don't suggest to be split into two teams. Hmm. That's great. Okay. And it's a very great session, Niladri. Thank you, Sulab. You have got us through, I mean, all finer details of safe. Yeah, those are not actually fine. Actually, fine to details. be very honest, I mean, this is first time I'm, this is my first, you know, interaction with the, with this safe and you okay. took it so nicely. So everything was clear. It was not like that something was not clear. Thank you. Yeah. So, so once we actually attend those training, where we go into deep dive. So, so far I am talking about, I have seven core competencies, but what are those right, core competencies? Right. How we can correlate uh, each core competencies with as is world that currently we are working. So those details uh, are actually the details, but as of now, I'm mm -hmm. for anyone who is uh, getting introduced for the first time, I think for them, this is uh, good to start with. All right. Okay, so you will also publish costs as well, like for each certification? Uh, I think uh, Nitesh will be taking care of that. Okay, Nitesh. Yeah, yeah so uh, 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 it is uh, Sulab, right? Right, right. So Sulab, I guess uh, I have taken your number, right? And, mm -hmm, right, uh, Nitesh. Yeah, we will, we will connect separately. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, again, this is Ravi. Uh, one more thing. Any chances to be conducted in Hyderabad training? Yeah, again, um, that's the same thing. If we get enough count, uh, we can actually do that in Hyderabad. As we know, uh, see, there are many times we got uh, six member or seven member, but we don't conduct a training with six, seven member because uh, we don't get uh, that much of uh, values if you are not making enough teams. So that's our goal is. So uh, again, in Hyderabad, uh, 
I don't know how much uh, members we'll be getting or how if you are the only persons we have three four people who shown interest from Hyderabad but again if we get at least eight member uh, then we'll definitely do in Hyderabad otherwise uh, you can come down to uh, Delhi and uh, we can find out what the best we can do so that you can uh, come to Delhi and uh, attend that so Nitesh will uh, talk with you separately to find out the best possibilities if you want to come to Delhi but if you have a group uh, and want to have a training in Hyderabad, we can do that as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ravi, I guess you are in the same WhatsApp group, right? Yeah. Okay. So please, I have also pinged my number by the refer me group and uh, uh, you, uh, we can connect separately and uh, we can discuss, I mean, uh, uh, how we can make a plan for Hyderabad uh, folks. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. So guys, uh, uh, yeah, Kathy, you were supposed to say something. Yeah, hi, Nitesh. I want to register myself for the 26th gen training in POPM. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, you. basically, I want to ask from where I can prepare well for this certification? Uh, uh, see, uh, once you have... At once you have attended the training, the training itself gives you enough information uh, for at, uh, passing the certification. But along with that, uh, we'll be giving you a book and few links to study and you will get 30 days for uh, studying will be telling you what you will be studying, what are the links, uh, what are the books and every information will give and that 30 days time is enough to go through all this information and clear the exam very successfully. So after that I can directly move into the scrum master role profile as currently I'm working as a senior test engineer in manual testing. See uh, moving into the role if certification cannot actually give uh, you that role directly whenever you go for an interview even if you have a certification you need to clear the interview and in the interview they will ask scenario based question that's why I think I was answering someone so uh, having a certification is easy to get your uh, certification get your profile shortlisted very easily now the next step to clearing that interview you need to have uh, some kind of idea how the scenario what are the different kind of scenarios how you can uh, answer uh, tackle those scenarios in your real life okay thank you thanks so uh, anoop and guru and kishore and uh, Richa and Sanjay, you guys have uh, not asked anything. Any question, any doubt, guys? No, 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 no question. As of now. Okay, okay, thank you. No uh, doubts at this point. I was just probably looking at if something was there in Bangalore, but maybe I'll try to connect with you. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm sure. sorry, uh, your name, please? Good. Guru, okay. Guru, yeah. Okay, Guru, okay. 